In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create a rocky desert terrain in Gaia. And we're going to create this more closer up to the terrain and not so large scale so that you can actually export what we create out of Gaia and use it as a model or an asset inside of Unreal. So you can kind of create your terrain and then use it to build up a much larger terrain or a much bigger scene, kind of similar to what you'd be able to do with a mega scans asset or a scan asset. So we're going to look at how we can do that through Gaia and then the following steps of taking what we produce in Gaia and making a proper modular asset for our environments. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is some work inside of Gaia. We're going to generate this kind of rocky desert landscape. And to do that, I'm going to start off with a slope noise. We're going to create a bit of a cliff. And we're going to start off with the slope noise because it gives us a nice kind of slanted cliff-like structure. And we're going to have to modify some of the settings on it because by default we get something that looks all right but doesn't really give us the look that we're going for. So we're going to change the scale much larger, maybe 100%. We'll change the displacement amount to maybe 0.25. So it gives us these larger shapes that are more further sticking out. And then we'll turn on stratified and that'll give us kind of these rocky slanted shapes. And that looks pretty good. And we can play around with the seed as well to get a kind of pattern or a, a variation of it that we like, maybe something like this. And then after that, what we'll end up doing is start adding some other nodes. We're going to create a curve node because a curve node is going to allow us to shape this and customize its shaping. So I'm going to add a curve node and you can see with this node it kind of changes the shape of it based on our curve here. So we're going to leave this as gentle but we're going to set this to be a different kind of shaping of curve and we can add points by double clicking and I can start to kind of structure this cliff in a way that I think feels more natural or that would kind of fit the way that I'm trying to shape it. And maybe something like this works pretty well. Something like that. I have some flatter areas, some more steep areas. That kind of works. And you'll notice that I'm using 0.5k resolution right now. Just so things update quickly, we don't have to wait. As we start to add more, we may up that, but for now, I'll stick with that. Next, I'll add a, a terrace node because a terrace node is going to give us some more detailed, uh, kind of finer, kind of staggered shapes on these rocks. So I'm going to connect the curve to a terrace and I'll press, I can press F and G to preview or pin and pin as underlay to make sure we're previewing this terrace. And you can kind of see what it does. It takes this and turns it into more like steps like this. And we can change the, the kind of settings for this. We'll change our terraces to be a large amount. So we get all these little smaller kind of shapes here. And then what we can end up doing is adjusting the steepness not to be too steep and the intensity maybe not to be too intense. We can also add reprocess which sometimes helps out some of those details. So I could turn that on and then we can also play around with the seed. It might not look like it's doing too much right, right now, but if we up this to 1K resolution preview, you can see what it does without this. From that, you look at a section like this to this, it adds a lot of nice kind of detail. And we can also change our sunlight direction if we just want to see these shapes a bit better. So maybe that helps as well. So the next thing that we're going to start doing is getting some real kind of patterns and erosion and, and different shaping in here. So the next thing we're going to do is add erosion nodes. So we have this terrace. We're going to put that off to the side. We're going to add erosion. We'll take our curve, connect that to erosion. We're doing this to kind of erode the terrain, which will simulate kind of water falling on it, erosion of the terrain over time. And maybe this is a bit too soft. It makes the terrain like too 
sandy and too smooth. So we'll adjust some of these erosion settings. Our duration, we could up a little bit. And our rock softness, we can also kind of up that a bit. But what we're also going to do is also increase the inhibition. So let's set that to maybe like 400. And if we apply that, it might look like it goes like goes like super super soft, and we have all these very smooth sandy shapes. But if we turn off the aggressive mode here and reapply that, it'll retain a little bit more of those details. Those just kind of rocky lumps, and that can definitely help. So we're gonna do that, and we can adjust this a bit more. I can even reduce the strength a little bit if I think this is too much. But we want some of those sandy shapes because we're gonna mix this with the terrace. So the terrace that we have here, we're gonna mix that with this erosion and kind of get a bit of both. So it's not too bad if we if we do end up with kind of more softer shapes here. Maybe my strength I will leave at 50 or maybe even 60, um, just to force a little bit more of that, that sandy kind of shapes in there. And we're going to mix these two together, the erosion and the terrace, using a combine node. Now the combine node, I'm just going to set to type as max. So I have this combine node. Type is max, 100%. And we can adjust that, but I'll just connect both these up. And now you can see it blends that sandy area with these rocks now. And we start to get these rocky cliff sides with sand also kind of seeping down them. So that's pretty cool. Now the only problem about this is when we take a look at this, it's very sharp and cut off in some areas. So we're going to add another node called Alluvium. And Alluvium will add some dirt or sand pile up on everything. So if I connect that up to Alluvium and preview that. See how it softens everything? We'll change its settings. So amount, maybe 50% instead of 75. Settling, maybe a lot of settling, like nine. Chaos, maybe more chaos, 0.5. Apply that. And the nice thing about that, adding that chaos, is it gives us this kind of stipple or dotted pattern at some of the slopes that you see here which adds some extra detail of smaller sediment or rockier, more kind of gritty sand that falls down the, the sides of the cliffs or that kind of builds up in the corners. So that adds some detail as well. Now the next thing that we're going to do is add one more erosion node on top of all this, which will kind of ruin everything. But after we adjust the settings, we'll be able to pull it back to something that that works. So after we add this erosion node, it kind of makes everything too soft, breaks everything, but we'll go in here to our settings, settings make it so it's not as soft for the rocks, not as strong for the strength, and apply that. Okay, it's not as bad. And then maybe we'll add some random sedimentation, which will give us some additional breakup. Um, along with some volume and some sediment removal. And if we apply that, there we go. We get these nice little streams and things. We'll turn our resolution maybe to 2K just to see how this looks with that additional resolution. So it doesn't take too long because we don't have too many nodes. You don't have to have a ton of nodes to have things look pretty good. And you can always customize it more after you get kind of a base look down. So that's what we're going for, kind of like a starting point. Uh, it will give you an idea, this network, on how to build things that, that look more complex. And hopefully you'll be able to, to kind of take the methods you learned here and build even more interesting things. So this is already looking really good. We got a lot of detail in here. So now that we have this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it done here and not worry about doing any more 3D stuff, but it's gonna be time to add color to this. So we're gonna pin this erosion as our underlay, which I've already done. 
And now going forward, you know, this is the end of our height map creation. I'm going to call this height map. Now we go on to the 2D kind of texturing side of things. So what we're going to do is add a sat map, which allows us to use a gradient for coloring. And I can go through here. I'm going to look at the Sandy library. And usually somewhere around like 200, 300 has some pretty good Sandy ones. So I'm going to use the Sandy 274. This looks good. It has some nice variation. If I connect that up to our height map or erosion and preview this sap map by just pinning it, you'll apply the color. And it'll just apply it from the base going up to the top. We don't really want that. It doesn't really give us much detail. So what we're going to do instead is add a surface texture node, connect that to our erosion, set the surface text to peaks with some strength, apply that and preview that. Gives us these nice kind of edges. And then we'll connect our sat map to that surface text. Let's check out what that does. Not bad. Now, if we take our sat map here and we reverse it. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now we get sand built up on things. So that's already looking really good. And we have something now that, that feels fairly realistic. Now, I can adjust this. Maybe I'll take reverse off. I'll turn on input clarity. I can clamp this gradient that we're using. Maybe add some bias. Try reversing it again. And we can play around with this and kind of get something that that looks good for a sandy environment. And this isn't too bad. This is pretty cool looking. So we can kind of feel free to adjust these settings and get something that that looks more natural. And once we have sand, it's looking pretty good there. We can leave that alone. And we're going to go add some other nodes. So we have our surface text here, which gives us a good, interesting mask. We're going to do the same thing with a few more masks. We're going to add a soil node, a rock map, and a flow. And we'll connect up soil, rock map, flow, all to our erosion here. And if I preview soil, it gives us some nice soily buildup that you'll see. There we go. And we can change that to be stronger. Maybe I'll set it to like 15. So it'll be more noticeable. And we're just creating masks. Now our rock map, let's take a look at that gives us all these little rocky patterns. And for our rock map, we can change the coverage. Maybe we'll make it like 40%, density maybe negative 15. Okay, so that gives us some more little patterns in these sloped areas. That looks pretty good. And then finally, our flow map, which is gonna simulate kind of like water flowing down. If we preview that, we get this. I'm going to turn off the tertiary setting and turn on the primary. Do rainfall of like 50%, apply that. It'll be really noticeable streams for our sand, which is good. And now a little bit of a, a simple secret here. We're going to take our rock map, this one and this one, and minus them from each other. So we'll create a combine. Connect this and this. Set that combine to subtract, maybe like 90%, preview it, and it gives us a really good map here for adding color. So now what we're going to do is add a couple more sat maps. We'll color our, our soil here with another sat map. For that sat map, we'll just dig through here and find something that kind of works. Uh, let's look through Rocky. And something maybe with a lot of contrast, just so we get 
some nice variation. This looks pretty good. So I'll click on that, connect that up to our soil, preview it. Okay, maybe reverse it, improve clarity. That looks good for a bunch of kind of soily kind of colors. Same thing. Now we do the same thing that we did here for our combined node here. So another sap map. Maybe this one will look for something more sandy. So I'll go here to sandy. This looks good. Got some nice variation there. You clamp it a bit. Change the bias. Preview it, see what it looks like. Okay, try reversing it. Just kind of play around with this till we get something that gives us a lot of detail. This isn't bad, we'll try that. And now what we'll do is we'll, we'll tie it all together. So this is not gonna be anything complex. You could blend it in much better ways, but I'm just going to do a combine to make this simple. Take this one and this one and just do a 50% blend. And we get something like that. And then same thing, another combine, this combine node and our surface text sat map. And again, blend 50%. Okay, not too bad. We can adjust the blend a bit if we want. Maybe go back here, adjust this one a bit. And now we can kind of play around with it and get some good kind of surfacing details. And already this isn't too bad. You can spend a bit more time and get some more detail in here. Uh, but this this is not, not too bad. Maybe this is a little bit. After this combine here, the sat map has some patterns that we could kind of make look a little bit better. Let's see if we change the bias. Maybe that's better. But overall, not a bad start. So now we have some basic surfacing on our, our terrain here. And from here, we could export this, finish up a lot of the, the texturing and surfacing inside of Substance Painter, Substance Designer, uh, Mari, other painting software, even Photoshop. So from here, you can go and kind of add more details or do whatever but already is looking pretty good. And if I change this to a 4K resolution, we'll see all the full res details. So I'll do that now, and then we'll, we'll take a look at how that looks before we start setting up the export for all this. So here it is in 4K resolution, and we can see there's a lot of nice details in here. And this is something that will be pretty good to start with as an export. So to export this is really just a matter of tagging what nodes you want to export. So we'll export our height map, we'll press F3. That tags it for export. Uh, we'll export this final combine node. We can rename and call that our texture. It's like our combined texture. And then it's also good to export your masks. So surface texture, soil, rock map, flow. So I'm tagging all those with F3 or right clicking. You can also just uh, mark them for export here. And then when you go to build, you see them show up in this files to save uh, menu and you can just start build and export them out. Uh, one thing I also do a lot of the time is create a mesher, connect that to your height map, and that will export like a decimated optimized mesh of this terrain as well. So if you go to the mesher properties here, you could set the vertice count. I could keep it light, like 256. Uh, triangle's adaptive, and it'll export a mesh with 131,000 triangles or faces, uh, and that will be like an optimized version of this terrain, which might be useful if you're making an asset out of it or something that you want to build into a model and not just use from the height map. So in this case, that, that will probably be useful. You could also generate a 
normal map as well, which is not a bad idea um, if you're going to be using it like a game or as a, a asset as well. Um, so that's something that you can also connect up and set up to your, your textures to add a little bit more detail. But aside from that, that's it. Our node network's not huge. All this is the 3D kind of shaping section. All of this is like the texturing section. And we get a pretty good looking uh, landscape from that in not that much time. And it has a lot of nice uh, details on the, the ground here and everything. So from here, we can kind of export this out. We'll talk over next in the next set of videos how to clean up areas like this. Like this is a, a thing that you often have to deal with with height maps or anything that's height map generation. These really stretchy kind of vertical slopes it can't really do because it's just a, a 2D texture that determines how the vertices or points get offset in height. So that's all this, this generation software does is it's not going to be able to take care of 90 degree cliff angles like this, but we'll go over how you can actually uh, fix all that and make it super high detailed cliffs as well uh, in the next few videos. But this is a kind of starting point to create a detailed desert terrain in Gaia. Uh, if you've liked this video, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell so you get notified when there's new videos. Like this video comment down below and if you're part of the patreon or you check out the patreon in the description uh, and you you join you'll also get access to the pdf of this kind of video tutorial where it'll have all the steps kind of listed out and you can kind of review it or keep it for future reference and it will also generate a similar environment to the one that we went over in today's video that you see here in this kind of image on the, the PDF starting page. And I'll also be giving that file uh, to everyone who's part of the Patreon uh, as well. So you'll have this file as reference as well that builds this really nice desert terrain, kind of the same way we just did, uh, but this is a little bit more time spent on it. So you can also get this file available for download as well uh, if you're part of the Patreon. So definitely check that out and uh, I'll be adding the next set of videos uh, shortly.